Hello, theory students, and congratulations. You have completed the five core semesters of undergraduate theory. Today, I invite you to join me on a journey to expand your training. But how, you may ask? We already know how to label every chord and non-chord tone out there. And that is precisely my point. Today, we will not be labeling chords with Roman numerals. Nay, that will not suffice for our investigation. Consider the following example, taken from Brahms' Concerto for Violin and Cello in A minor, Opus 102. Let's listen to this excerpt from the middle of the first movement and attempt to add some Roman numerals. We begin in A flat major. These Roman numerals seem a bit unusual. Perhaps there's a better way to understand what Brahms is doing here. Enter Neo-Riemannian theory! So how does Neo-Riemannian theory work? Essentially, it looks to study the connections and relationships between chords, cadences, or other musical events, rather than the labels or definitions for the events themselves. A Neo-Riemannian sees a transformation of one chord into another. David Lewin, who was the first theorist to really kickstart the modern field of Neo-Riemannian theory, began writing on this subject in 1982, and by 1987, he had articulated several terms that will be necessary to our discussion today. One of these terms, the clang, is given to the musical objects that we are working between. Specifically, at least for now, we can think of a clang as a general term for a consonant triadic sonority, essentially meaning any major or minor triad. Let's return to the Brahms that we just examined. You may have noticed before that one triad occurs in each measure, specifically the major and minor triads on A flat, E, or F flat spelled inharmonically, C, and A flat once more. These transformations are particularly interesting because each clang is only one semitone away from its predecessor. Assuming inharmonic equivalence, we could represent the transformations like this. The arrows, show which pitch within the clang changes or transforms to give us the new clang. I've included conventional triad labels for reference, using plus and minus to indicate major and minor. We can identify two types of transformations here. The first, indicated with red arrows, transforms a major triad into its parallel minor triad. We will refer to this transformation as P for parallel. Lewin and Cohn label our second type of transformation, indicated with yellow arrows, as a leading tone exchange, represented by L. We needn't concern ourselves with the history of this terminology for now. Just know that in our example, L transforms each minor triad into its submediant by moving the fifth of the triad up by a semitone. I should take a brief moment to mention that these transformations also work in reverse. Just as L transforms a minor triad into its submediant, it also transforms a major triad into its mediant. That is, the clangs E minor and C major are L related, in the same way C major and C minor are P related. Here is a list of all of the transformations denoted in the early Neo-Riemannian writings of David Lewin and Richard Cohn. Do not be alarmed by the sheer number of them. Most other functions can be derived from three main transformations, relative, parallel, and leading tone, which we will henceforth refer to as R, P, and L. One common way that music theorists visualize these transformations is through a use of a table of tonal relations, often referred to as a tonnets. The tonnets appears in several forms, but one of the more common ones is pictured here. 
as an infinitely expanding grid featuring diagonals for major thirds, minor thirds, and perfect fifths. Beginning with the gray clang, C minor, we can apply R, P, and L to reach new clangs, respectively E flat major, C major, and A flat major. In this way, R will always reflect over the line of major thirds, therefore preserving the major third, P preserves the perfect fifth, and L preserves the minor third. Recall that P and L were found in our opening Brahms example. Each L transformation moved the chord root down by a major third. We can arrange these triads into a circle such as this to better visualize their relationships. We refer to this circle as a hexatonic cycle. Because every clang in the hexatonic cycle is related to its neighbors by moving a single voice by a semitone, the hexatonic cycle is a type of maximally smooth cycle. It has at least four distinct elements of the same set class, whose transformations between elements are parsimonious or maximally smooth. We refer to the triads found directly across the circle from one another as hexatonic poles. Hexatonic poles share no common tones. By this point, you're probably wondering what northern means. This hexatonic cycle is actually one of four possible hexatonic cycles which Cohn arbitrarily labels Northern, Eastern, Southern, and Western. All six clangs in each cycle are made up of only six pitch classes, which can also be divided into two augmented triads separated by a semitone. Douthit and Steinbach represented this feature by showing the hexatonic cycles in relation with the two augmented triads that comprise their pitch class sets. The hexatonic cycles are shown in bold. Note that one can transform one augmented triad into the other via three parsimonious semitonal movements, and that each individual augmented triad exists within precisely two hexatonic cycles. With this in mind, we can view the augmented triads as coupling chords which link the hexatonic cycles to one another. This arrangement results in Douthit and Steinbach's famous cube dance. In addition to the four hexatonic cycles shown here, we can also divide the cube dance into parts centering around the augmented triads. These divisions are known as Weizmann regions. Together, we can divide the cube dance into hexatonic cycles or Weizmann regions, and both methods are useful for analysis. In conclusion, let us remember that Neo-Riemannian theory begins with transformations, such as P, L, and R. There are many more cycles that can be derived from P, L, and R, such as the octatonic cycle or PR cycle. Some other topics that expand on those covered today include a model similar to the cube dance that works for seventh chords, this is known as the Power Towers. And with that, I must say that I hope you enjoyed this introduction into Neo-Riemannian theory and will be inspired to learn more about it in the future.